always got to make sure they have fresh water. Uh, this is tap water, but it's been uh, treated with conditioner to take the chlorine out. Alright. And of course, stars of the show. There's Big Boss and his girlfriend Tiamat. So, uh, greetings to the Camp Cannon Army. I hope everybody's New Year is off to a great start. Just wanted to spend a few moments sharing with you guys um, the iguanas. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my incubator, which we'll do here in a moment. But uh, many of you are like, whoa! <laughs> Gotta make sure your furniture's secure. Easy, big guy. I don't want your tail to get pinched. Oh, you okay? Let's see. Hold the GoPro and fix the furniture. Come on. Um, that's a little exciting. How about if I take this and prop it in between? There we go. There you go, big guy. Whew, okay. So uh, today is Saturday. Saturday is when I give uh, the animals of mine that will eat Missouri their Missouri treat. I only give it to them once a week, uh, which includes Bosk and Tiamat. Uh, the leopard tortoise, Indy, the Russian tortoise, Lana, and Lucky, who has already devoured all of her Missouri tortoise chow. I think it's just a, it's a good part of a, of a um, staple diet. Um, you know, obviously iguanas, uh, the greens and the vegetables and a small percentage of fruit. Tenosaurs are a little bit different than the green iguanas and the cyclora in that I do give them some protein in the form of good quality dog food or insects or some other commercial protein product for them. But just wanted to spend a few moments hanging out with Bosk and Tiamat on this beautiful Saturday here in Virginia. Mid 70s today, my beautiful bride and I took a couple of our pups to a local park for a walk in the wilderness. It was awesome. Uh, I know Kenan's going to start talking a little bit more about keeping animals inside since not all of us are fortunate enough to live down in South Florida or Southern California or other uh, predominantly warm climes throughout the year. So. Uh, Obviously, the, a huge consideration when keeping iguanas and monitors and tegus and caiman lizards and all that stuff is the eventual size of an enclosure. Uh, I am lucky that Bosk and Tiamat get along because uh, this is probably the smallest I would want to keep them in. They were in something slightly smaller than this. There was some aggression. I had to split them up. This is a bigger enclosure, and I've put some mesh on the back back here. And uh, Tiamat will get behind that when Bosk is feeling overly frisky or aggressive and he can't get to her. So size is important. This enclosure is six foot long, four foot tall, two feet front to back. And this is a pair of medium sized iguanas. Uh, Bosk is going to be seven years old. I got him from Thai Park in 2014, March of 2014. And he was hatched probably uh, fall of 2013. So he's going to, in the fall of this year, he'll be seven years old. Tiamat's the same. And he is about 31 inches. Uh, maximum size listed for this species is about three feet. So he might reach that. I mean, reptiles continue to grow throughout their life. Uh, but it slows down once they reach their adult size. So this is, a, as you know, compared to a six foot green iguana or a four and a four and a half foot rhino iguana or Cuban iguana, these are not huge iguanas, but they're not small lizards either. That's, you know, compared to the size of my hand. He's a chunky boy. Females are cons considerably smaller, of course. Uh, so size of the enclosure, uh, obviously water facilities, depending on what kind of animal you need. I don't, I'm not too concerned about humidity for these guys. I do miss them off occasionally. I always offer fresh water in a bowl. They will defecate in that water every now and then. Um, but I really, I don't monitor the percentage of humidity or anything like that. Uh, if there's some stuck shed, I moisten them up real good a couple days in a row, help them get it off if necessary. But that's it as far as humidity. Uh, tropical sun-loving diurnal reptiles that bask obviously need full spectrum lighting to help them uh, metabolize calcium so they don't suffer from metabolic bone disease or any other ailments. 
And so in this particular enclosure, I have mercury vapor bulbs, one on each end. Uh, that helps provide multiple basking spots, just in case uh, Bosk or Tiamat, because females can be aggressive too, uh, decides they want to chase one or, one or the other off of the basking spot. And, it, and I also have a full spectrum, four foot long T5 high output. I believe that's a Zoomed uh, 10.0 bulb. Just to be doubly sure that, see now I'm getting a little nervous because this is out in my garage. Where are you going pretty girl? Don't go running around off, off me. Oh, Pika. <laughs> She's awesome. Tia Matt, where are you going? Ah. I don't mind her being out, and when I had her in the back room, I let her out all the time. I just don't want her to get loose out in the garage. So let me try to put down some barriers, at least visual barrier. I had them open to keep it warm in here, because it was real warm in here to cool it down a little bit. But anyways, so she's on my shoulder. There she is. I got my glasses on because I'm blind. Uh, anyways, size, water, uh, full spectrum lighting for UVB and you got to make sure the temperature's right so they are out in my garage this is a uh, brooder heat lamp one of them nasty red ones I really don't like using them but if it gets cool out here I think keeping them warm is more important than how ugly a red heat lamp looks so and plus there's a heat pad uh, Zoomed uh, habitat heater down on the bottom and that helps to ensure that this enclosure stays warm and actually when this thing kicks off it helps to ensure this this entire garage enclosure stays warm for uh, all the animals but they all have ceramic heat emitters just a 250 watt ceramic heat emitter really does not kick off as far as penetrating heat like this thing does and uh, you guys might see some drama over here because lucky is tia matt's daughter and they really don't interact but that is one female iguana displaying to another female iguana. So, and she's got Missouri tortoise chow all over her mouth. So I just kind of got to watch these ladies a minute. I don't want anybody to lose a toe. But there you go. That's some iguana aggression for you. Just to prove the point that females can indeed be territorial. Um, now let's see if I can get Tia Matt. Oh, okay, okay, there we go. Let's get you back in there. All right. Let's come back over here to Bosk, because I think I rambled on quite a bit. This was just be, supposed to be a few minutes. I've probably been going on seven or eight now. And um, let's shoot over to the incubator real quick. So Tia Matt laid... 44 eggs the first week of November and uh, these two uh, containers right here uh, there's 30 that are incubating so um, three were immediately I knew were infertile and then between just a week or so ago um, and when she laid them the other 11 just went bad on me but uh, still have 30 really good looking eggs and if my math is correct, um, usually takes between 80 and 90 days of incubation at about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. So hopefully in about two weeks, these guys will start hatching on me. I also have uh, some giant anole eggs that are incubating out here. These five eggs right here are from um, my false chameleon, and I had no idea she had laid them. I have a nest box in there that I check periodically. And uh, she elected not to use it and had just been laying them in damp mulch in the back corner of her small terrarium that I just never noticed. So I'm hoping they're good. Um, they definitely grew because that one on the left is also one that I collected with those five. So see how small it is? And they're usually that's a night and old egg on the right. And that's about, that's a good size compared to how big they are when they're actually laid. So they've definitely done some swelling. So hopefully that means there's good embryo development and I got some babies inside of them. And uh, these two are Anola Smallwoodeye eggs on the right, Anolis Baracoe, and then these six on the left are Anolis Barbatus. But just wanted to give you an uh, update on Bosk and Tia Matt's eggs. They're looking great and hopefully they will be hatching in the next couple of weeks. If anybody's interested in my incubator, it's just a uh, standard 
Hovabater with the viewing windows. Uh, the standard models come with a wafer thermostat. However, I use a Vivarium Electronics uh, thermostat because I think they're a little bit more accurate. And uh, the wafer thermostats is just turn it all the way up and then plug it into the uh, Vivarium Electronics to actually control the temperature. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, little video for today for this month's submission, su submission to the Camp Kennan Army. And my boy Bosk. Um, if anybody's interested in all the other stuff I have, this is just what I have out in the garage out here. I've shown it to you guys. I've shown everything to you guys more than once, but I just uploaded a complete room tour on my channel. And it shows everything except for what I have outside because it's winter here in Virginia and nothing's pretty during the winter. Uh, but uh, head on over there if you'd like. Check it out. And uh, until next month, take care.